The vast expanse of space has always been a source of mystery and wonder for us humans. From the beginning of time, we have pondered the secrets of our own planet and whether we are truly alone in the universe. Finally, scientists have discovered something truly remarkable, a massive source sending us thousands of messages from space. But what exactly is the source of these messages? Is it a natural phenomenon or something more? Baffled by the continuous stream of messages, scientists are now seeking answers to numerous questions. Could this be a sign of intelligent life existing beyond our planet? If so, what are they trying to tell us? These questions have sparked great excitement in the scientific community as they delve into the possibilities and try to unravel the mystery of these messages from space. So join us as we explore how scientists detected a massive object transmitting messages from space. Have you ever heard of the term fast radio burst? While it may seem unremarkable to some, this phenomenon has captivated astronomers, scientists, and space enthusiasts alike. Part of its allure lies in its enigmatic nature, as there is still so much we have yet to learn about it. Can you imagine the excitement when scientists began receiving multiple radio signals within a short period? Space holds many mysteries, and fast radio bursts are one of the most perplexing. Fast radio bursts, or FRBs for short, are brief but incredibly powerful radio signals that last only milliseconds. The first FRB was discovered in 2007 by Dr. Duncan Lorimer. However, upon examining archival data, scientists found that FRBs had been detected around 2001 during a neutron star, or dead star, study conducted in the Magellanic Clouds. Still, it's no surprise that the FRB is also known as the Lorimer burst. When telescopes capture an FRB, researchers focus on a property called dispersion, which measures how much the FRB has spread out before reaching Earth. In the vastness of space, the voids between stars and galaxies are not truly empty. Instead, they are filled with plasmas composed of charged particles. As light travels through space, it encounters various obstacles that can affect its journey, one of which is plasma. Plasma can cause light, including radio waves, to slow down. Interestingly, low-frequency radio waves are affected more than high-frequency waves, slowing them down further. Fast radio bursts consist of a range of frequencies. High frequencies reach Earth before low frequencies, causing a dispersion effect. Scientists use this dispersion to estimate the distance of the FRB source from Earth. The greater the dispersion, the more plasma the signal has passed through, indicating that the source is farther away. The first FRB detected resembled giant pulses from neutron stars and was traced to the vicinity of the small Magellanic Cloud. However, due to limited equipment, the signal's variation could not be fully measured. Researchers believe that the first FRB could have occurred with a few hundred bursts, but the probability of detection was low. After the discovery of the first FRB, scientists thought it was a rare event because it was only seen in three out of 13 receivers at the Parkes Observatory. A few years later, a student named Sarah Burke Spaller discovered another burst with almost the same dispersion as the Lorimer burst, rekindling interest in this field. In 2013, four more Lorimer bursts, officially named fast radio bursts, were detected. These bursts had significantly higher dispersion than the original Lorimer burst and were found during neutron star studies at the 64-meter Parkes Radio Telescope. The brightest burst showed dispersion broadening similar to what is expected from extraterrestrial radio signal sources. In 2014, the first FRB discovered at another observatory was announced, but debates about its source continue. This has now become a mystery that researchers are eager to solve. With advancements in technology and research methods, we may be getting closer to understanding these enigmatic bursts and their origins. In 2019, scientists delved deep into their data and made a discovery that left even the most experienced astronomers astonished. Analyses revealed that the source of the signal named FRB 121102 produced a staggering 1652 bursts in just 47 days, breaking the record for the most bursts ever detected in an FRB. This new information opened up a whole new world of possibilities for researchers striving to find a repetition interval in the bursts. Unfortunately, their efforts were in vain as they couldn't identify any signs of a pattern. The lack of a repetition interval made it incredibly challenging to pinpoint the source of the bursts. Scientists, suspecting that these bursts might be produced by multiple mechanisms, 
acknowledged that unraveling the mystery of FRBs could take considerable time. To make matters worse, most FRB sources only burst once and then disappeared, making it even more difficult for scientists to predict or track them. A few FRBs are known to repeatedly send signals, and one of the most active ones is FRB121102. This peculiarity allowed scientists to trace it back to a dwarf galaxy 3 billion light years away. However, it was far from a typical FRB. Its behavior followed a truly unique path. For instance, after 90 days of activity, it would fall silent for 67 days. The amount of activity from FRB 121102 gave astronomers the opportunity to observe it as it propagated. And one of the instruments that aided in this was the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, or FAST for short. Even during its testing phase, the telescope managed to capture FRBs. In just a 47-day period, it collected a massive 59 hours of data. The high activity seen in any FRB so far was 122 bursts occurring in just one hour. Thanks to this enormous data set, researchers were able to statistically analyze the source's activity. They divided the bursts into two categories, those with higher energy and those with lower energy. Distinct differences were observed between the characteristics of these categories. It was noticed that weaker bursts were more unpredictable by nature. Despite the lack of continuity in most FRBs, scientists seemed determined to track them. Their research revealed that these bursts originate from galaxies millions or even billions of light years away. But even for a fraction of a second, they can generate enough energy to power millions of suns. Recently, scientists stumbled upon another intriguing FRB detected by the FAST telescope in China. Named FRB 190520, this FRB produced 75 bursts in six months and stood out by repeating itself more frequently than others. Eager to learn more about the bursts, the team used the radio telescope at the Very Large Array Observatory in New Mexico to focus on the FRB. They finally discovered that the source of this mysterious signal was a dwarf galaxy located about 3 billion light years away from us. Surprisingly, the research team also found a weak radio signal originating from the same point as FRB 190520. This persistent signal is considered a rare finding and is known to exist in only one other FRB source. Researchers were able to determine the distance to Earth of FRB 190520 using the location of the dwarf galaxy it came from. However, there was a strange inconsistency in their results. The estimated distance based on the FRB's dispersion was 30 billion light years, 10 times greater than the actual distance of 3 billion light years. While the result was both remarkable and confusing, it's worth noting that out of the more than 800 FRBs discovered, only 19 have been traced back to their source, allowing for accurate distance estimation. Astronomers have to rely on dispersion to measure the distances to Earth for the remaining sources. The scientific community was captivated by this new FRB, which raised more questions than answers. Unlike the other 19 FRBs, whose distances were estimated with accuracy similar to their actual locations, the dispersion method used in this case was far off the mark. It's safe to say that scientists were thoroughly puzzled. Are persistent radio signals becoming more frequent? If so, what is producing them? Could the mechanism causing FRBs also be responsible for the persistent radio signal? Astronomers are currently trying to find answers to all these questions. Furthermore, the unusually high dispersion rate of FRB 190520 was also surprising. Was it caused by something nearby or was it related to the FRB itself? The team is using multiple telescopes worldwide to uncover the secrets of this strange object. With further discoveries, we may finally solve the mysteries surrounding fast radio bursts and find a way to better understand these peculiar objects in our galaxy. In conclusion, fast radio bursts are fascinating and enigmatic cosmic events that have captured the interest of both astronomers and the public. Despite significant progress in recent years, such as the detection of over 800 FRBs and the ability to trace some back to their sources, there is still much we don't know about these energy bursts. From the discovery of persistent radio signals to surprising dispersion estimates, the more we learn about FRBs, the more questions we seem to have. However, what's happening in space isn't just about radio signals. Scientists notice some activity in the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A asterisk. 
Apparently, there was a new and strange collection of objects not far from the black hole. Normally, these objects would be together, and during their orbits, which can last 100 to 1,000 years, they would only start to stretch when they got close to the black hole. In 2005, scientists detected an object at the center of our galaxy that they named G1. Later, in 2012, they found another object they called G2. By 2014, G2 was seen near the black hole. It was thought that G2 was initially two stars orbiting the black hole together, but they merged to form a single giant star. Scientists attributed the fact that G2 was not seen for a while to the possibility that it was hidden by a thick cloud of gas and dust. Recently, four more objects named G3, G4, G5, and G6 were found. They were orbiting in different orbits than G1 and G2. Researchers believe that all six objects are formed from binary stars forced to come together due to the strong gravitational pull of Sagittarius A asterisk. The merging of stars may be happening more frequently in the universe than previously thought. It is believed that the black hole can cause stars to merge, and most stars currently observed may be the product of mergers that are now rare. The interaction between galaxies and black holes is evolving, and scientists are continuing their research to learn more about this interaction. Although these mysterious objects near the Milky Way resemble each other, G2 is different in that it doesn't stretch like the others. Scientists think something is holding G2 together and allowing it to survive its encounter with the black hole. Also, the proximity of these G objects to Sagittarius A asterisk, which is likely swallowing gas torn from stars, means they could be feeding the black hole. This is evidence of complete chaos, not only in the Milky Way, but also in other galaxies. So far, we have only been able to map exoplanets that could potentially support life, and none of them have shown any signs of intelligent life forms. However, everything changed when scientists picked up a signal from the region of Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system. Proxima Centauri is by far the most interesting star studied by scientists. At a distance of just 4.2 light years, Proxima Centauri is the closest star to the Sun. It is much smaller than the Sun in size and mass and is located in the southern constellation Centaurus. Discovered by Robert Innes in 1915, Proxima Centauri cannot be seen with the naked eye due to its low luminosity. Just like in our solar system, celestial bodies called exoplanets orbit Proxima Centauri. With a mass of about 12% of the Sun, Proxima Centauri is a dwarf star with 33 times the density of the Sun. This means that the star exerts a stronger gravitational force on the celestial bodies orbiting it. Although Proxima Centauri has a very low luminosity, it is classified as a flare star that randomly and quite violently causes radiation-filled solar flares. These flares affect the two exoplanets orbiting the dwarf star, Proxima Centauri b and Proxima Centauri d. Another exoplanet candidate, Proxima Centauri c, orbits about 220 million kilometers from the dwarf star and completes its orbit every five years. However, due to its distance from the star, the existence of Proxima Centauri d is still debated by astronomers around the world. The existence of the other two planets has been confirmed and is currently being studied by scientists. Proxima Centauri b orbits the dwarf star at a distance of 7.5 million kilometers and completes one full rotation in just 11 Earth days. With a mass slightly larger than Earth, it is quite similar to our planet and orbits within the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. In this range, atmospheric formation is possible, and temperatures are suitable for the formation of liquid water on the exoplanet's surface. However, Proxima Centauri is a flare star that emits random radiation and causes solar flares. This makes its habitability highly unlikely and is debated by scientists. Proxima Centauri b receives 10 to 50 times more radiation on its surface than we receive on Earth. High radiation levels can cause an increase in the levels of oxygen and carbon monoxide that can accumulate in the planet's atmosphere. On the other hand, these high oxygen levels could lead to the evolution of complex chemicals and organisms that would lay the groundwork for organic life on the planet. This idea was put forward by scientists who believe that Proxima Centauri b could have an atmosphere filled with organisms, which could be the source of the signal recently emitted from the region. The possibility of water on the exoplanet could also lead to chemical reactions that could be conducive to the development of life. In short, 
Proxima Centauri b has some characteristics that could make it an Earth-like planet and is the only planet that could be considered for interplanetary travel. Do you think we could find intelligent life there? Maybe one day, as intelligent life forms, we will settle on other planets and send radio signals ourselves. Who knows? Thank you for your time. You can share your thoughts on this topic in the comments. See you in our next video. Goodbye.